on an xy plane graph sine cosine and tangent so this is a video for anybody that's never seen these before so the first thing um, you know graphing sine cosine and tangent I'm going to assume that you know some sine what sine means what cosine means what tangent means so you know generally what those things are and have some experience if you don't know what those are you need to go find a different set of videos but we already know that uh, graphing this would be, you know, you've probably already had experience graphing a line. You know, just generally, this would be what this equation looks like on an xy plane, where this is x, this is y. Um, y equals x squared looks something like this. Um, you know, the, let me change colors here. Um, x squared plus y squared equals 1. That's a circle of radius 1. So that graph looks generally like this on xy plane. And y equals 2x, or 2 to the x power, that's an exponential function. So you've probably seen um, um, graphs uh, similar to these if, if you're to this point where you're studying, uh, where you're studying trigonometry. So, so trig is just another family of functions. And so how do we graph y equals sine x? And I imagine the first time that you did these, you, you went ahead and made a table. The first time you did any graphing with something new is you just made a table and graphed values for x and values for y. We well, have to know a little bit more about it to, in order to graph these. First off, you need to understand that x is an angle. Okay, so um, that angle, in our case, could be in degrees or it could be in radians. So you have to understand that X is an angle. Um, and usually, like if you use most technology, it defaults to radians when you type in. Like if you typed in Y equals sine X into a program like GeoGebra, it's gonna default to radians and give you that, that value. So, but keep in mind, X is an angle. Y is gonna be a ratio. If you're dealing with sine, Y stands for opposite over hypotenuse. If you're in cosine, it stands for adjacent over hypotenuse in a right triangle. And if you're at tangent, it's opposite over adjacent. Or sometimes I like to refer to uh, tangent as the slope function. Sorry, I didn't mean to bang that against the deal. So let's just look at what this is with a unit circle. So if you don't know what a unit circle is, um, you might go take a look at some videos, some trig videos on a unit circle. Um, uh, GeoGebra, oops, uh, not GeoGebra, but uh, um, Khan Academy has some great videos on that. And so this one's a video for, from a friend of mine named Jarrell Welker, uh, who's a, just a phenomenal math teacher in Lincoln, Nebraska. But uh, he created this to kind of help us understand what sign cosine and tangent are so uh, the graphs at least so I'm gonna do first where we're gonna show the sine graph this R this this just changes the dimensions of your of your circle so we'll keep it on one for a unit circle and uh, I'm gonna show the angle and I'm gonna show the sine and so let me just kinda peel P up and you're gonna see this point here move as I peel P up you can notice here the x-axis is an angle and 2 pi is out here, um, that'd be 6.28, which is radians, so we know this is defaulting to radians. Pi is 3.14, so that's 180 degrees here in this location, and this is um, 360 or 0 degrees, and then obviously 0 degrees. Pi over 2 is 90 degrees. And so let me p pull this function up. just a little ways. We'll just go to right there. So my radians is 0.76. So pi over 2, I think that's 1.57 if you take 3.14 divided by 2. So right here um, we have an angle of 0.76, so we're going right 0.76 and up whatever the red dimension is or whatever this red value is. Um, and if you keep going 
Okay, so there, we're at the top, our radians are 90 degrees, or pi over 2, which is here, and our um, length of our opposite for sine, because opposite over hypotenuse, our radius is 1, so this just gives you the value of this red is going up is just your opposite, the red line, the length of that red line. And if you went up here to P to the top, our red line and our green line are the same, which is uh, 1. And you can see that. So at pi over 2, which is 90 degrees, um, our value is 1. And then if you kept going around, now that opposite becomes smaller. You can see it there. It's coming shorter and shorter and shorter. Here it's 0 at 180 degrees for sine. And if you keep going around, there's 270. It's at negative 1. And then if you keep going around for a full circle, it goes to 0 again. So, and as you go around, it, and around and around, it's always going to trace out that function. It's just going to keep repeating over and over and over again. And so that's what a sine wave looks like. So y equals sine x starts at 0, goes up to 1, goes down to negative 1. And if we change the radius to maybe uh, double it, all that does, and let me reset the, i got to uh, move something just really quick, sorry, whoops, hit the wrong thing. I'm going to clear those traces out. And so let's do it with a longer radius, so you can see it goes clear up to 2, and then down to negative 2, and then back up to 0, and back and forth. And I'll pull that back up so you can see that. So your max is 2, your minimum is negative 2. And so that's just making the circle 2. So let's go back to 1, clear our trace out, and show the difference to cosine. Well now, cosine of 0 is 1, because now we're dealing with adjacent, which is along the x-axis. So let's go ahead and peel this. So now we're talking about the blue, which is this length along the x-axis over the hypotenuse, which is 1. And there's 90 degrees. And notice it's the same graph. The difference is where it began. So the initial point, instead of 0, 0, our initial point is 0, 1. But it still traces out a wave with a max of 1 and a minimum of negative 1. So now let's look at tangent, and uh, tangent is, again, your slope graph, so it's a little harder to think about. Oh, let me clear out all my traces here. And so here, my slope is 1.24, and my angle is 0.89, but what happens when we get to 90 degrees? My slope becomes infinitely, uh, I can't get it to lock on 90 degrees this time, but it's undefined there. You have an undefined slope. And then going back down, and it traces, so it traces this pattern that you see here. So that's the tangent graph. So it's a little, little funky looking. And we'll study that a little more. What's kind of cool is uh, to help you understand that tangent, so here's the sun, here's the stick. So as the sun rises in the east, um, and we think about it as slope, and we're going to go ahead and animate this. So there we're at 7 a.m., excuse me, 7.45 a.m., and our slope is this value, the rise um, from 0 to G over the run, the red line of 9.5. Uh, six negative 9.66 and so that's our rise and run so that's what your tangent value would be at that angle of 67.5 degrees and you just keep animating that so if you changed it to time and this is kind of cool and it shows you so at noon your slope is gonna um, your slope is gonna be zero and on down. So that just shows you the time with the in terms of the sun. Uh, but let's look at it um, in terms of a tangent graph. So let me drag this over a little bit. So this is kind of the same thing. I wonder if I can drag. Oh yeah, here we go. 
So if you look, you can see that tangent graph, and an asymptote occurs right there when that sun hits the starts to rise. It's not going to cast a shadow because it's straight across. So your shadow is infinitely long. And so there's your length of your shadow. So that's kind of neat. So it shows you the tangent graph and how that works. And again, there the sun's setting. So it has an infinitely long tangent graph. So anyway, or shadow, excuse me. So that's just kind of generally what the three look like. So back to this. And again, I would uh, play around with this some. Uh, with a, just a table and make sure you understand sine, cosine, and tangent. But this just kind of shows you some kind of cool little things to show you what really is happening. And so there's your sine graph. We'll put the cosine with it. There's your cosine graph. And then we'll put tangent with it, which is just your, the graph of your slope. And so those are the three graphs and uh, for sine, cosine, and tangent. And they all look the same. We're going to talk about in the next video, how do we know what the amplitude is? How do we know what the frequency is? How do we know what the period is? We're going to talk about those over the next several videos. But your general shape of these graphs, this red line is always what the sine graph looks like. The blue line is always what the cosine graph looks like. And this green graph, that is what the tangent graph always looks like. And we're just going to vary prim, uh, period, frequency, wavelength, all that stuff is going to change and we'll change some numbers in there. So hopefully this helps you give you a, just a general overview of what sine, cosine, and tangent are uh, in terms of an XY plane. And uh, see you next time.